that's right that's it right good afternoon everybody um yeah <coughs> you just know don't you some days we go you know there's just no point in trying to be more organized <laughs> just just go with the flow and the girls will take me how they find me and um excuse me just for a minute oi out of there come here come, what? cats don't do that do that if you do that they don't come come here come here you are gonna come do you want to say a quick come and say a quick hello say a quick hello and then go and sit in the corner go and sit in the no not on the not on the switcher that way that way okay Thank you. She had decided to, um, yeah, she decided that she was going to uh, run all of the equipment cords this afternoon instead of me. And that they were all snakes or lizards or mice or something, something like that. Um, oh, I found you. My camera's not even in the, <laughs> I'm not even central to the camera today. Oh my goodness. Uh, good afternoon. Christine Davy. good afternoon. Now, we've got a few things to catch up on first about machines. Oh, Barb Lawrence's baby's just arrived. Oh, I'm so excited for you, Barb. We, Ginny, no Christmas bells. We will um talk. Christine Davy. I missed your email. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you didn't get to go to Cairns. I'm, I'm, I have not, you know, your machine's sitting there ready to go, and I think, oh. She's sunning herself up in Cairns and you weren't even there. Uh, so yes, I will have your machine ready for you next week. Tim, our mechanic, needs to give it its once over. Um, and that hasn't been done yet. One, because I thought you were going to be away. And two, he's moving house today. And you'll be excited to all know his new business is three warehouses down from mine in the same complex. So I just need him to do your machine for you and then I will organize a time with you to pick it up. So just wanted to share that with everybody in the whole wide world. Christine's getting a new machine. Um, yeah, so Barb, unpack slowly. Look at the manual and tick everything off. Michelle Grimble's here. That's fantastic. I'm really pleased. And Joy's here as well. And Denise and Jenny. You're doing pickup, yeah. Um, Melanie. Yeah, hi to the pussycat. Thanks, Sharon. What about me? Hey, what about me? I'm here too. Oh, hi from Flynn. So, Jenny Miller has the most drop-dead gorgeous grandson. And I did promise I would say a big hello to young Master Flynn today. Look forward to seeing at the next exhibition with your grandmother. Hello, Cindy. Parcel in the mail to you. Good afternoon, Marilyn. Parcel in the mail to you. I have been parceling with Lisa King. Hello, Val. Got your message as well. We will talk about classes. See, I, I feel like I feel like I've seen everyone. Hello, Lorraine. Colette's here from the UK. Hello, Colette. Are you a Natasha girl as well? It's really nice to see you. Um, I posted something off to the most magnificent address in the UK that uh, involved it being put in the signal box at a railway crossing only in the UK I don't know if that was Colette or not but anyway how's that for an address isn't that not just the best um, hello Helen and Rhonda as well and thank you Christine and hello everybody Nan's here um, Denise yeah it's been a really really busy couple of days since I saw you uh, I've just recorded I'm just gonna move my mouse not that kind of mouse because if Ginny steps on the keyboard at any stage, she's a bit scatty today, she's going to end the video because the cursor was hanging over the end live video button. No, no, no. Jeanette, are you new to visiting us? Are you? And Kirsty as well. Oh, all coming from the UK. Hello, Kirsty as well. I hope things are really good with you. Yeah, it's 5am. What are you doing up? Only mad people are up that early in the morning. Just mentioning a few. Hey, Flick. Good to see you. Um, owls next week. We're doing Felicity's cute little parliament of owls next Thursday. If you want to join in and make the cute little... I'm doing this and they're not even... They're not even here. 
but they sit here on your hand and they're really really cute so Flex is up next week and also next week we'll be featuring some of Felicity's lovely quilts as a backdrop as well because they're all sitting waiting for the spring exhibition and the Christmas one and they're just sitting there and I think we should really have them up and show them off. Um, so, oh, so much stuff. I feel like we've been together for the week because we started a bit early on Sunday last week. So I want to just do a quick recap for you. I have the list. Again, I've got the list. I want to recap on a few things that we've done during the week. And then today we're going to move straight on and we're going to do a little bit of handbag design because you know I love it. And it's, it's, it's not about you, it's about me, a lot of it, because I am over. Absolute, wait, I'm missing something. Just let me check. Wait, no, it's there. I'm over the plastic bags. Oh, I love a plastic bag as much as the next person. But um, to, the, to the point we've been doing plastic bags for the supermarket so long, they're all getting icky and yucky and then I don't like throwing them out. And then so I've decided <clears throat> at this point in our lives, while we go into the supermarket, for many of us, it is a major social outing at the moment, that we're going to do it in style, absolutely in style. So that's what I want to take you through um, a bit quickly. Good afternoon, Judith in uh, Yarram. I've just been on the phone with Yarram Drapery this afternoon, talking machines and a bit of gossip, local gossip. None of it about you, I promised you. Um, but if anyone is down that way with Judith, please, please remember that Yarram Drapery is um, a textile pants through stockist, which means they have a lot of my fabrics down there. And if you would like any of my fabrics, you just walk in and say, hey, Zita. Can you please get this from Lisa and have it in your shop? Because she's good like that. And we all love Leanne. Let's face it, Leanne's just divine too. So, what did we do this week? Quickly recap before we um, move on, move on, move on. Do I have an overhead shot? Oh, I do. Look at that. Oh, it's a bit... If I could not have staged that better if I tried. Hang on, let me just move the scissors. Look at that. Ah, wow. Okay. Miracles never cease. So we introduced Liberty for the first time this week. Well, that was very tally silly, wasn't it? We introduced Liberty and we introduced two little packs to whet your appetite. Now, I must admit, Linda and Rhonda were down this morning and Linda kind of stroked, she stroked one of the bolts and said, but can I please have some by a metre because I need it for a border? And I said, sure. So uh, we will be getting more in, but this special will pull down on um, the end of the month. What's today? The 29th. So a couple more days. This special will come off the website. Why am I doing that to you? Because Steve's getting to the point where every fabric that's not mine um, gets kind of pulled out of the way. And then he can stock take it to put the stock up on the new website because the new one will always know how much stock we've got. And then when something's not available anymore, it will take it offline. So you're not disappointed and I get a little whoop whoop alert and I can order more or I'll know when there's only five metres left and I can get more. The lovely thing about these liberties, contractually, the Australian distributor has to have them all in stock all the time. So that doesn't concern me, but still... We're going to do that so we know at one point what we've got. Anyway, so that's one of the specials that you will find under Live 7. So you just put this into the search window at www.chandlerscottage.com. Groundhog Day for a lot of you, I know. But just stick that in and it will bring up everything we've talked about this week and what's on special. So these are $26 a metre the way they work out and you get four fat eights which is half a metre, so they're $13. But when Steve-O puts them up on the new website, they're $29.50 because they are a beautiful, beautiful base cloth and quality um, like mine, but without the metallic. And it's Liberty, so you're paying for Liberty and it will be $29.50 a metre. So these are the cottons, not the lawn. <clears throat> there we go. So you've got the blueberry pack. And the claret pack and you can see if you haven't watched this week we've been doing stuff we've absolutely been doing stuff with them and what we've been doing so go back if you want to see what we've been doing and you missed it and have a look at Tuesday's show we had some specials on some little English paper piecing 
um, Perspex shapes, which are in there, and they're still up and available to you, the gorgeous Epiplex ones from the gorgeous Danny that are being made for us. Uh, and then we also did, yeah, because Lisa was going to do more, wasn't she, in that magical 24 hours between shows? It's actually not 20, it's not 48. It's not 48 hours between because there's two hours for the show, so it's 46 hours. I still didn't, I still didn't use it, didn't get it done. So, yeah, never mind. It'll all be done. So these are the other ones that are up. So there's two sets. There's the pointed star ones. So you get the diamonds and you get 15 large diamonds and you get 15 small. So you can have a little bit of a play with those. You know I'm going to be doing lots of playing. And you get 20 of these in a pack, which are the octagon ones. Right? So we've still got those and I can get more made for us. So that's all fine. Oh, it was Vicky. I'm so sorry. How did I do that? I'm sorry, Rhonda. It was Vicky with you. Oh, that's a bit of a flashback. Sorry about that. It was Vicky this morning. I should know. I should know. Vicky has a beautiful sewing machine for me. So that's a bit embarrassing. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But at least I know you're watching now. It's just testing you. Oh, Benedette, it's fine. I will give you an early leave pass today. That's fine. But yeah, come back later. That would be that would be really lovely. So that's what we had on. The other thing I don't know if I mentioned are these cool pens. I think I did Sunday. These are the Trio Chalk Pencils. Margaret from Margaret's Fabrics introduced, introduced these to me. And let me find you a bit of black fabric. This bit. And I think they're... So they're, they're great. It depends on it depends on what you're doing, where you where you keep all of your stuff, all of your projects. Um, so we all love an individual chalk pencil, and some of us have got white ones, green ones, pink ones, whichever suits you, and that's great. But if you don't want to carry three around, you can grab one of these, and this one has black, white, and pink. So it's like what we had, remember, at school. I'm going to have to cut this bit off now. I don't know if you can see that. Let's just try this camera and see what happens. Oh, there you go. You can see it. So this is a, they're a beautiful, they are a beautiful chalk pencil. But if you don't want white, and this is what I loved the other day, I was drawing onto fabric that was multicolored, and so white worked on one bit, pink worked on the other bit, so that's the pink down there. And then I don't know that you'll see this one. Let's have a look. No, you can't see it. <laughs> Hang on. There's... <laughs> Where's the white? Let me find something that's got a bit of white in it. Here we go. And then you've got black. So if you're going around lots and lots of different coloured things, it's all in the one pen. They are $24. Yes, they are. But individually, when you buy separate ones, they're $9.50, so it actually does work out. If you haven't got any yet, it works out a really good deal, because you get them all in the one. They're really funky. I like them. If you, It's also got on here that it's, a, it's grippy. It's very grippy. So, you, you know, you can get a really good hold on it. I like that. It's sort of like a... Like a, like a rubber finish. So there you go. You think you know everything and someone says, why don't you have these? Right, so that's that done. I've told you about that. Um, you will also see up online the designer packs, which we played with on Tuesday and I'm still playing and I haven't come back with them yet. The designer packs that have got our Dresden wedge in them. So this guy. So please go back and have a look. Uh, I will have new ones up, but there is a designer block pack that is being discontinued because it had the lilac flowering gum in it, which we are not continuing with unless someone really has um, has a go at me for it. Anyway, uh, I was going to explain a certain term, was I Donna? What was the term? I don't remember what the term was. Give me a minute. Was it the one about my stuff not being delivered because of the monsoon? Is that it? If you think of what it is, please let me know. Hello, Robin. Um, please let me know because I don't know what it was. 
should have written it down. Anyway, I will write down. Just if you think of it, let me know what it was. So that's been discontinued. So the designer packs are up, that that goes with, and also the Sophia bag kit will then change because we won't have that print anymore. So there you go. Um, now, oh, uh, a quilter's life. Now, a couple of things on that as well. Thank you to all of those that have signed up this week. It's just so exciting. I've just done a little blog now that I've sent it's uploading to Cass so that she can put it up for you. And um, yeah, we're all going to make yummy things this weekend. It's going to be really, really good. And um, the special on the trinket boxes. If you're going to sign up, sign up now so you can go in and get one of these gorgeous little trinket box offers that we're doing. And also so you're up for the geisha print. Now, shopping bags. Let's talk shopping bags. I am over the plastic bags. I can't do the bag. I can't do the plastic bags anymore. We've been doing them for how long? I don't know. I don't even remember now. Way, way before COVID, we had to. I remember because I couldn't work out how the Coles delivery guy was going to deliver my groceries without bags when we were in isolation. That's how freaked out I was at the time. So. Um, down the track I throw some out and I don't like throwing them out and then I don't know I get really it just feels unhygienic and they get icky inside so I decided seeing most of us can't do much at the moment when we go out we might as well go out in style so let me clean all of this off if you have a pen and paper handy you're going to need it because Lisa's going to go into design mode and um, do you remember yesterday I spoke about having your find some meat trays and things for me or some plastic tubs? We're going to need them now. Did you see what's sitting? Did you see what's sitting here on my board? Did you see this? It's the gum leaf tote pattern. Uh, if you're waiting on your order and you're wondering why I don't have it, it's because uh, the pattern needed a little bit of tweaking. And Cass and I have just finished it. I have to edit this now. And then they are all packed, ready to go. And then we print them and they zoom, zoom out into this afternoon's mail. So that will be me after the show. Donna, what did you... Wait, wait, wait. No, you were talking about applique and you said you had written down to talk about it on Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. Oh, don't... You know what I'll do, Donna? I will go back and have a look at the show. Um, and I will... And I'll see what it was. There was some really cool term that came through from FedEx this week, or DHL. It's the term, I'd never heard it before, Lisa King knew what it was. It was, it was all about not being liable because it, there were natural causes and disasters beyond my courier's control. I felt like ringing FedEx and saying yes, but they're quilters. They need it. They gotta have it. They gotta have it now. Um, there were two things. Yes. Yeah, so FedEx is stuck in France from the UK, and that was to do with the distribution centre in Germany being in trouble with the floods and things being damaged, and they've got an oversupply. So I had stuff coming from the UK sitting is sitting in, in, in France at the moment and that will come and then we have so those purse frames that I said were going to be here today uh, monsoon season or typhoon typhoon monsoon in China so our stuff hasn't floated away it's just in lockdown in a warehouse waiting for the weather to pass I'm just waiting for the next one now who've I got left Australia Post Australia Post is slow because of the pandemic Everything's just, you know, a bit slow. Hello, Kerry. Good to see you. All right. Are we ready? I'm a bit hyped and I haven't even had coffee. I've only got ginger beer. It is ginger beer, I promise. It is ginger beer. Let's, let's get going. We are going to do wraparound base and sides today. Uh, short plug, Life 7, if you don't have, if you don't have the book, or if you do have the book, we are doing what is technique. I don't remember. Wrap around page page 18. 
if Natasha's on, she's going to go, why don't I have the book? Because I'm putting new pictures in it and then later on. Wrap around base and side. So this is technique four in my little um, handbag design basics book. But today we're not doing it to make flash bags. We're doing it for our everyday shopping bags. Uh, if you have a look under Live 12 as well, I've popped some of my fabrics on special. So if you really, really want to do it in style, you can. Okay. Remember I said, keep your meat trays. This is what I'm going to use as my bag base. And I'm going to design the bag, or the shopping tote, whatever you want to call it, around this, because I want this to sit in the base of my bag, so that if it's cold stuff from the refrigerator or cheeses or anything, and you get any condensation, or perhaps you want to put your meat in here, and then that absorbent stuff that you get that absorbs all the liquid and stuff in the base of the tray is going to capture it and it's not going to wreck your bag. But it's also going to give you structure because these are noisy but also quite strong. So the first thing we're going to do with this particular method is we need to work out the size of the base of our bag. So these ones have got, and then we build the panels around it, alright? So this has got curves on the corners. Now for the purpose of this bag, we're going to the supermarket, okay? We're not going to the opera house. So I'm actually going to use, uh, I'm going to go straight edges. I'm not going to curve them. Hello, Judith, and hello, Lynn. Hello, Christine and Kirsty. Oh, Anne's here as well. Well, I, you know, I need to tell you about all of your orders as well. Hello, Francis. Good to see you. Well, I can't see you, but it's nice to know you're here. All right, you, can you see what I'm, I think you can see what I'm doing. I'm actually drawing, I've got template plastic under here. That's actually for a different project. Let me put that aside. I want to use, this as my base. So I just need to know first, if I was to straighten off my edges, I need to work out essentially what the finished base of my bag is going to be. Now, I can make it really complicated for you <laughs> in your maths, but I'm not going to. Actually, that's pretty cool. That is 10 inches. All right, so I'm just, I've made it a little bit bigger just because I want to keep it simple for you today. And I so don't want to make a mistake while I'm live. That would be tragic. So finished, 10 inches. Can you see that okay? Hopefully you can see that okay. Oh, Robin's here too. Uh, Rosemary Croon, hello. Your order is ready at the door, I think. Emma and I stayed back till 7 on Tuesday night and it was dark and it was windy and it was raining. <laughs> uh, but it was a moment and it was a good moment. We got a lot done Okay, uh, with orders. All right, let's look this way. Now, uh, again, I'm going to make it generous for the purpose of this exercise, and I'm going to make the sh oh, I'm going to make the short side. So that means I've got a nice big base. I'll just see. You know, it's, we're not going to actually need this drawn up on a piece of paper, but I want you to see it. So that is the finished size. Excuse my messy writing. Finished size is 10 inch by 6. So when you cut your base, remember to add your seam allowances. So you're going to cut your base 10 and a half times 6 and a half. So you're adding on your normal 6 and uh, 8. Oh, your normal half inch seam allowance, okay? <laughs> Quarter inch for each side to the bottom. So that's the one we're going to cut now. Now, now, now. Or well, now what you have to do is work out what your panels need to be. And with your panels, I've got one here to show you. The Flutterby. With your panels on a wraparound base and sides, the panel comes round and it stops halfway round and there's a seam there and the same on the other side. So what we need to do is work out 
how wide that panel needs to be for us to literally have our panel come round each side like this. It took me, hello Donna, Tish you're up too. We live a funny life together don't we, watching back and forth. Um, <laughs> you're up so early, did you even go to sleep? Hello Marcel. Um, so we need our panels to do this. So it, it took a big long night with a mate once and uh, a couple of drinks and we worked it out. So all you need to do to work out how wide your panel is, so your panel's going to come up obviously from the base but it's got to wrap around, so thick 3D for me. All you need to do to work out how big this is, is you add these two together. So not the one with the seam allowance, your finished size one. So our panels need to be 10 plus 16, 16 inches wide and then add on your seam allowance. So 16 and a half wide and then they just need to be however high you want them to be. Now you're not going to want them really high for shopping. I had a little bit of a look at the Woolies ones, the, the canvassy ones, um, and they're, they're only about, they're probably about 12, but I'm actually happy for mine to be a little bit less. I've learnt the bigger the bag, the heavier they get, the harder they are to carry, the more you're going to wreck your shoulders for quilting. So let's prioritise. So I'm going to make mine only 10 inches tall. So ten and a half with my seam allowance. So they're going to be six and a half, sixteen and a half inches wide, and they're going to be ten and a half tall. And you're going to need two of those, remember. Now it's going to be completely up to you whether you want to add a lining or not. A lot of you will have scrap fabric, uh, maybe some planes that you could line it with, just the normal way that we make an outside and an inside put them both together, right sides together and sew around the top. Any bag pattern you've got from me is going to tell you to do that. But I'm not adding batting into mine, of course, so um, you don't have all that complication. The other thing that you can do is just hem the top. It doesn't have to be a fully lined bag. Um, it can just be hemmed and you can make your handles by double, o double over or four thicknesses of a fabric uh, like our tote bag which got left at work, like the one I showed you the picture of, or you can just buy some ribbon or something that's really, you know, nice and sturdy that's not going to hurt your hands that you can top stitch on around the top. For me, I've been making mine with no lining. I've just doubled over the top hem about an inch and I've just added in some ribbon or doubled over fabric, whatever I had. Um, so just keep it, keep it durable and simple and stylish rather than making it too complicated because I probably got there'd be six to ten plastic bags in my car there'd be four in Rob's you know they, they end up all over the house getting with different shopping trips and things so you're probably going to want a couple so anyway so we're back to this that's what I need so my panels I'm going to cut 16 and a half wide and 10 high and um, I'm going to, who said what? Yes, Melanie, of course I will put this in a quilter's life for you. Absolutely, consider it done. Um, there's also a, uh, there's also an episode on, do you know what, it might only, it's not the first one, but there is a longer extensive episode on the technique uh, on, give me a minute, YouTube on the Lisa Chandler channel under a craft and cook show it's there as well and there's a segment in the leftovers as well so have a look please have a look there too but I will pop it in the club for you six and a half wide ten and a half high okay two of those and you just need one bag base all right now I'm going to leave this one here because that's for the large meat tray that came with the chicken drumsticks then quickly we're going to do another one we'll do a smaller one just so that we're all savvy with this Wait, wait, wait. I just, I always want to flip these new creative cut rulers because I'm a lefty, but I don't have to. They've put everything both ways. I love it. Okay. So this one is going to be eight. That way. 
Oh, sorry. There you go. It's eight. I need a bigger batch. I will use my little one for this bitch. And then this way. Oh. Oh, let's do it. Five and a half. Let's go radical. Let's go a half this time. Okay, five and a half. Finished. So we add these two together. Don't add your seam allowance first. Add it after. Okay, so eight plus this, that's 13 and a half. All together for our panel width. Finished. Okay, so this is eight by five and a half. So you're actually going to have your base eight and a half times six and you're going to cut one of those the finished of your panels is 13 and a half so you actually need to cut them 14 inches by however high you want because it's a little bit narrower I might go a bit taller so let's go 11 and a half this time so I've got room for my hem okay so I will put this in, yeah, I will put it in a quarter slide if you're in there for you. And you can just, just have a play back. Right, there's one more. One more. And it is the one that I did on um, YouTube. And if you do go in, please subscribe for me. I'm trying to get my numbers up so we can stream on YouTube at the same time. Because that would be really cool. So we can do it there. Let's get these out. Now, when, when you can get back out to a storage shop, a $2 shop, whatever it might be, or you might have one in the cupboard that you can use, you can buy these really cool containers. Um, any, anyway, you can probably buy them online, but you, you know, you know where to go looking for these. They're in, you know, cheap little, well, not, they're not you know, dollar shops and storage shops and things like that, or if you've got an old um, grotty Tupperware you don't want to use anymore, or I've got a drawer full of containers out there, hoping, I don't know who ate the lids, but the lids are gone. Actually, maybe the lids are down the back of the drawer. I need to pull the drawer out. That might solve the mystery. Okay, these. These are fantastic. If you find the right size one, your milk containers or your large juice containers are going to fit inside. And this is great because you know when you, it, they all, everything falls over when they're heavy in the bags. So if you can put these in, get two side by side, it's brilliant. And so it's going to stand up nice and sturdy for you at the checkout when you put them in. So you can have a bag and it will hold it up. Um, this one, I've got one of these in the car. This I can hold the juice and then you can fit something narrow like the bacon or something down through the middle or, or your ice pack. So if you're not coming straight home or you need to detour. Sharon Keys past the Lint Chocolate Factory outlet, just checking you're watching. You can put an ice pack in down there or stand things up. You know, love these, love these. So this one, it's base. I should know this off by heart. This guy's base is 10. Oh yeah, I do this one 10 by 5. So I'm not even going to bother drawing with the ruler this time because you've got the hang of it. 5, 10. So I'm going to cut my base 5 and a half times 10 and a half. I'm going to add these together. So my panels are going to be 15 wide plus their seam allowance. So 15 and a half plus as high as I want. Who knows? Be as high as you want. Probably as high as my... What was that? You want just inside, yeah, 12. So maybe about 12 and a half, so I've got a hem. So that one's my milk one with my tub. <laughs> Yeah, what else would you do? Exactly. Exactly, exactly. What 
what's parting with the socks? What have I missed? There's a, there's a line here I've missed. There, I've, I've missed it. I don't know what I missed. What did I miss, Jim? I missed something. Um, or I'm, I tell you what, I, I will. This is probably the best time to fess up. We got to the point where there were just so many orders in progress waiting on back orders with the square frames that are held in the monsoons um, with stuff coming out from floods in Europe that we've got people on back orders and things everywhere me finishing off that pattern that one's my fault but there was just lots and lots of orders there was stuff to in so Emma and I got when I got back to work on Tuesday we had over a hundred orders in different phases or being collected or multiple ones putting together. Cheryl, who I saw was online before, had five orders from emails and onlines and everything. And I just looked at Emma and she said, you need to wrap this up because it's, um, yeah, to have that many orders and I'm, you know, and, and from a business point of view, you can imagine what that would mean for me at the end of the month and it tax them. It gets too hard. So we did, we went through and it was quite interesting, most of the orders that were waiting to go, we crammed them in a bag and even if we'd waited for today's show, they wouldn't have fitted. We had fitted the maximum with most of them that we could cram in a bag. If we could do that, we set it free. So please, please don't be cross with us if you go, I wanted it to wait till Thursday. We just got to the point where we couldn't because of the accumulation of back orders that we could fill. Oh, and the LED lamp lights came in as well. So a lot of people's lights got popped in with their orders. So that filled up a bag. So it just, it had to go. It had to go. So I think we're nearly completely up to date on orders. There might be two or three just waiting on a couple of things, except for the square frame purses. Um, and then everything else, it had to go. Because this week we've got applique sampler out and the quilter's life, you know, and if I didn't get them out also today and yesterday, they'd be there till Monday I'm being quite honest with you so and we've got the door open again and there's people coming in it just we had, to clean, we, had to get it cleaned up. we had to get it cleaned up is what I'm whispering okay so let's get our let's get our fabric out and let's get one of these sewn up so you can see how this works right. that's our hexagon you know how I promised you the hexagon this week? You know how I promised you this? Realistically, I'm not sure we're going to get it done today, girls. I know that a lot of you have ordered it. Just thinking about it, I might. I know you've ordered it. Hey, maybe we do this Tuesday when Emma's here as well. Um, because then, then I'm going to have time to do it properly. And then by that stage, if you've ordered your hexagon, you will have it with you. I, I'm, I'm hoping you're not going to get cross with me over that as well. There's just so many things I'm in trouble for. Okay, so on on the website you've got uh, some fabrics on special as well under under live seven, and this is one of them. So I'm going to make up uh, one of my bags that I'm designing and making with this one. So I think oh, I have to decide which one I want to do. I think I might do the small one. Where's my small one? Is this my small one? That's my small one. That's that one. Of course it would be really good about yeah that's the milk one, that's the large, that's the small. Okay. So I want this one. Of course, of course, of course. Hello, Pauline. Hello, hello. Um, Pauline's here from Black Butt. Now, obviously, you do not need to buy new fabric to do this. Of course you don't. You're going to go to the cupboard and you're going to use up everything. And I mean everything that is there, that is little scraps if you've got strips, sew them all together to make your panels. I just realized you can't see the end of my board. That's all right. Um, just, just go through and use things. And of course, if you've got Christmas fabric sitting in the cupboard, these are gonna make 
fantastic gifts to give to people or if you're going to someone's house and we will be able to do that this year guys you know ladies you um just really nice to rock up with your goodies or a homegrown plant you know things that you've grown while you're home all those sorts of things are made in a handmade bag and of course i will be going to the supermarket with christmas themed shopping bags at christmas for for all of for all of december for all of december who loves what oh rosemary you love the book oh thank you thanks for the endorsement i'm glad you do um that's awesome it's it's fun it's just really good fun all right so my panels are going to be 11 and a half high i'm going to cut this first get this one done I suppose if we all go swanning around the botanic gardens again we should have our own bags with this with our with our picnic in or to shop in the gift shop okay so that is uh, what did I say 11 and a half high but I need my panels to be 14 wide as well so the reason I cut my panels first if it's all going to come from the same fabric my base could be from anything uh, doesn't have to be from this but the reason I like to do that is just in case there is enough left over to cut my base as well so it's better to cut your panels first and and see what you're left with so these need to be 14 wide oh, I'm starting a bit askew with the ruler today hope Rob's not watching oh, I don't think he is I think he's a little bit busy today do you, know, do you know what my husband does for a living besides helping me? Have I, have I told you all before? He is a very, very clever man. He is a quality manager for the company that makes all Heinz and Ferrex baby food for Australia and export. So your, the safety of the baby food going in your grandbaby's mouths is his. And I can guarantee you, you are in safe hands because he's amazing just such a clever man and yippee doo da has all the access to the software to do nutritional panels because that's what we're going to use for all our healthy quilter cool club recipes again this week yeah when we start them up again um, for a quilter cool slice all right so they're, they're my two panels and then we need our base so let's see i need an eight and a half by six so yes I can get my base out of this. I'll pop those out of the way. And we will come across here. So next Tuesday, you see me here with the Molly Duca, the lefty again. Um, next Tuesday is our first high tea Tuesday. And that means that Emma Bowman is in the building. So our new shop hours start next week. We're not open on a Tuesday. Em will be here with me in the house having fun. And we've just thought, what are we going to do for the first one? Because we had lots and lots of ideas. So we're taking a really uh, pretty, pretty little flower design. Um, it will be up on a quarter's life and it will be popped in any orders that are ordered on Tuesday. That's what we decided to do. And we're both going to tackle it in different ways, so different techniques. So she's stitching by hand, I'm machine stitchery, and she will do applique. We're doing little different things with it. But the other thing we're also doing Tuesday is starting our little, our, probably our first little rant about left and right handed rotary cutting so that we can do it together and go back and forth. And I've got a really nice little pattern um, that we're going to do it with. So I'm going to let her cook in my kitchen. That's big. That's a big thing. It's a big thing. You know, Emma, though, it'll probably arrive all done, ready to go. So she's on sweet and I'm on savoury. So um, that's, this could be the start of something really big or it could be a one hit wonder. We're not, we're not quite sure yet. All right. So the base is to be cut eight and a half by six. So that's that guy cut. So that, that's it. They are, that's all the cutting. If you're doing a really lean, mean bag, like I am, you can see that's my base. 
It's going to sit, my little dish is going to sit really nicely inside there. We need to clear the deck, also known as the ironing board, so that I've got it ready. What else is on the list? Oh, that's about it. Yeah, so are you, I hope you're all okay. Can we do the hexagon next week, if that's all right? Um, I can't promise Sunday. I would love to, but no can do. I'm sure, ah, oh, yeah, I can, I can make it part of the applique techniques that Emma and I are going to do. I can, I can, I can. So, uh, yeah, this is up. I promise to do three things with the hexagon. I'm so sorry. We will do that Tuesday, I promise, promise, and I'll have it all drawn up. I'll have things to pop up for you to print off in free downloads or in the club or whatever. Because it just, you know, we can only fit so much in, can't we? And um, there is a ton of orders I really want to get out today at work, so I need to go back and... Lisa King will have them all ready for me in what I like to call the Santa sack, but it's the Australia Post bag. A lot of you will see now we're slowly switching over to the new system too, so you might get little um, email alerts with your tracking number and things. It's all very flash. So what do we need to do from here? <clears throat> I'm going to show you just the basis of this construction for wraparound basin sides. Oh, look how, look how well that ribbon goes. That's pretty good. But you, I'm sure you will have rickrack or anything. Um, you all know how to do the four thicknesses, don't you? Let me just do this on here for you with the base. If you decide to make your own handles, whatever the finish width is that you want, it needs to be four times as thick. So if you want them to be, uh, what is this? This was six. So when I fold this up, it's going to be a one and a half inch thickness. So you just press down the middle, so it's a big long, right, as my strap. Press in, just press into the middle and press over again. It is a very, very durable strap and just top stitch down each side. And, and do remember you're not making a handbag, so that you don't want really long ones. They're going to be too heavy on your arms. They really are. Just keep them nice and short. Measure them off one of your um, canvas Coles or Woolies bags. You know, just find one that you're really comfortable with and just measure measure how long that is. So this is our base. And we'll take one of these. Uh, I think, now the other thing too, uh, Cordis Life Girls, I think we've got, club members, I think we've got, I think we've got everyone's addresses and details to mail out your trinket deal. Um, I think there was only a couple of people we still needed to get hold of. So if you, if you are a member and you've never been in a club or never bought from us on Facebook or online or anything, we could be looking for you just to grab your details. So uh, just pop me through an email, through a Quilter's Life or, or a message. But uh, yeah, we're all ready to go. And of course, we don't have your details from the club because it's all through Podia. We leave it all secured there. You need to mark the centre of your longest sides of your base. Just mark them with a pin or with your chalk. And do the same for me with your panels. So while I was talking, I've given that a little bit of a press. like that. So this will be the base of my bag. So if you're grabbing the gum the gum leaf tote that we did this week, the difference with that bag, I've only got the photo here, that's a bit embarrassing. Oh, can you see that one up there? See how it tapers? Um, actually, I put that up there. I didn't even talk about it Tuesday. I had it one of the exhibitions. It was an old um, uh, baskety bag that I found at the op shop and had a hideous orange lining in it. So I ripped that out and I put um, gum flower ivory in it and put 3D flowers on it, just for fun. Because, um, I, and I've, I've used it, I use it all the time. It's quite hilarious. I did it to show off about upcycling. Um, but I use it a lot, which is, which is good. 
good good okay so if you're if you want to make your bag taper like that um your 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 panels move that up your, let me put it up this way first if this was the top of your bag your panels would taper now if you are tapering just remember it's this it's this base that still needs to be that calculated measurement. So if I wanted this bag to taper, which you won't for a shopping bag, but if you wanted to taper, you would still make sure this is the width at the bottom and then you can taper out from there. So just remember, if you decide to you know, get a bit fancy schmancy with your shaping, you've still got to have that same width that we calculated um, at the base. All right. Wait, oh, Lisa Chandler, go that way. We are going to... Meryl, oh sorry, Jane, 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 I just saw your message. Thank you very much, but no, don't worry about your special going in with your order. I would love to do that for you. And I usually I would if it was a one-off, but because we've got over a hundred trinket specials and they're all in their own little envelopes and they all included postage and the stickers all being done, no, mate, thank you, but thanks for that. But no, it's all being done separately. So you're going to pin them together like that in the middle and then come out to the sides but stop at your quarter inch seam oh we have planes now above coming down low to Moravan Airport just charming just before I went live the guys out in the reserve out the back decided to slash all the grass so um, yeah we had noise but it's, they, they all finished up. Everyone's very considerate, aren't they, with their lawn mowers here? They all seem to... I wouldn't have gone out and told them to do it later, though, like the neighbour the other day. Okay, so that's all pinned on that side. And I'm going to flip it and pop the other one on on the other side. So if you... Uh, if you want to have a play with your own fabrics, do. And as I said, we've put some up on special as well. I'll just I'll show you the others in a minute. I'm going to leave, uh, folks. I'm going to leave this border stripe up on special for next week because it was the one that I really wanted to use with the hexagon. So I will leave this up. You know how it goes, and then at some point it'll get really low because you'll be buying it because it's on special, and then I'll have to reprint it, and we go back to square one. It's so funny, but I have sent off. I did send off uh, FedEx yesterday the the coloring instructions to do a pink, the pink and teal version of this. So um, that'll get that underway. All right, so they're pinned on both sides, so you can kind of start to see now what's going to happen. We're going to sew this, and then these are going to wrap around the side. So I'll just I'll pop that over there. Oh, a sewing machine. Jeannie, what did you do? Here it is. So Jeannie, what did you do with my sewing machine? Okay. No, Christine, this is not your machine. It's all packed up in its little box at work. Here we go. And then power would also be handy. So Joy's left the building. <laughs> I just think it's so lovely that you all say, I've got to go. That's so lovely. School pickup. There's a novelty. Oh, you're right. Oh my goodness. I do love I do love that noise though. I do love it when it starts up. Okay. I've got my quarter inch foot on. Actually, I was having very interesting conversation that um, it's always one that I enjoy having it's a it's a conversation that helps people make a really big decision about sewing machines but I really enjoy doing it now and I think it's just because I've been working with these babies for quite a while a lot of people struggle with what to do in terms of choosing a machine and one of the joys for me is helping them choose the machine that just a tick that matches what they want and need now and why they're buying a new machine and 
what they're going to want to do in five, ten years' time and make sure that the machine is never going to limit what they do. And I've just had that conversation with Karen and Yaron. So it's a big debate. Do you go for dual feed and the wider feed dogs or do you go for narrow ones and are you going to use it for quilting or piecing or add machine embroidery later or lots and lots of things. So yeah, it's a, it's a big decision to make. It's like buying a car. Do you want manual? Do you want automatic? Do you want heated seats? Yeah. Sunroof? Absolutely. But you know what I mean. It's about choosing the features that suit you based on what you're going to sew versus where you were going to drive versus there's no point in in buying a um, for you and I to buy a four wheel drive Land Rover with sat nav with the whole shebang if we're never going to go off grid. And the same applies to machines. You need to choose one that's going to be the best thing for you. So yeah, that's why I was on the phone with Yarum Drapery. If you haven't been, go. It's a, it's from Melbourne. It's a little bit of a drive. But they've got a really good bakery. Just saying. All right. Um, can I give you? Let me just see. Camera's probably not the best angle, girls, because I've got the, the table up a bit high. But just uh, so you're not looking at nothing. Pop it there. What 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 is going on? Now, what have I got you set on lovely? Run straight, run normal, doing cotton sewing. I just had to check um, because these babies, you can program them to do all sorts of different things and you can tell the machine what you're sewing. So I was actually playing with wool and felt applique earlier. Um, well, earlier, last night. So I really... I need to check that I'd actually told him we weren't doing that anymore, which we're not. But you tell it what you're doing and it will adjust all the thread, the, the thread tension and the foot pressure and everything for you. Which is really good for someone like me who is an impatient sewer. Just once it's done, I don't want to have to do 10 trials to see if I've got the tension right. So I'm just stopping just before the quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to cut it off there. Just trim, 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 trim. So I hope you've all got lots planned for the weekend. Um, it's really, really important at the moment. I know I keep going on about this, but you have to have a list. If you are in lockdown, you need you need a purpose to get up in the morning. You need to get up. You need to make the bed. You need to get going with the day. You may not sit in front of ABC News National News Channel until twelve o'clock. It's not okay. You've got to get up and go. I want to hear. I want to hear that you're playing lots of loud music that you you like and that you're buzzing around the house. Fiona, I saw your message come through just before I went live, or just as I did, and I'm really, really glad you've got your machine, and you are absolutely most welcome. Um, and I'm super sorry I missed you by that much at the studio, but uh, we will talk. So do you remember I was, you know, yeah, sorry, banging on, you must get up and do things. Uh, the big thing I think I said to you I did was clean out, hello Dorothy Mokoko, clean out the um, the recipes. All the ones that we've torn out of the free ones from the supermarket, all the ones we've kept. Big clean out. Give them one go. Just, just order the stuff and try the thing. Got the time and if it doesn't work, if it does it goes in a nice folder. And have uh, the healthy food in one, the Christmas food in another, and the naughty stuff in another section. So they're, they're categorised. So when you do go looking for something yummy to cook for dinner, you don't end up making a chocolate mud cake. Really, really important. Really important. 
because I not that I've done that or anything. All right, so they are both sewn together. Clean out those quilting magazines too. Oh my goodness, how many of those have we all got in the cupboard? F find a nice folder and you can't get to a shop for now, just get ready. Find a scalpel or a nice pair of scissors or an old rotary cutter blade and cut them out. Just keep the projects that you wanted to keep the whole magazine for and then get rid of them. You, you're going to create at least one spare shelf for more fabric in the cupboard. So they're both sewn on and I've stopped a quarter inch in. So no need to iron. You don't have to iron if you don't want to. You don't have to. But you do need to see what I'm going to do close up here. So so that these are going to come round the corner easier later. I'm just, before I forget, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to come in here and clip just into the panel, just a little bit. See that? Just a little bit. Oh, oh, I have another website, sorry, another Facebook group you might want to join if you're not a member already. It is called Love and Hugs from Australia. It was the brainchild of Natalie Bird, Birdhouse, Natalie Bird, at the start of the pandemic last year. There are 16 Australian designers. You may be a member because there are over 17,000 members in this close Facebook group. And we had a lovely, lovely time last year just doing um, all different little stitcheries and projects. So there's 16 of us in Australia and we would put one up each day or each week. And there's people quilters, stitchers, all over the world. And I mean that probably in the minority are in Australia, all through Europe, everywhere, everywhere, US and Canada. So if you're not a member, please um, apply to be in. That would be really good. I think you've got to answer a couple of questions, but then it's in because it's a closed group rather than a public one. But then once you're in, you can post pictures. And there is, everything is still there. You can go back and pull all the stitcheries and things down. But... We're back on, we're doing a new project and starting um, from August, each of us is hosting the Facebook page for two weeks. So you have um, Janelle Kent's, Helen Stubbings, it's a whole heap, you're going to love it. But get yourself on there. I'm on first two weeks of September, so the girls from all over the world are going to tune in with you. Um, if it works for them time-wise. I might switch around our hours a little bit that week so that we it's a little bit more amicable or we might do some evening ones as well but they're going to tune in at the same time you're watching on Chandler's Cottage it will live stream onto the Love and Hugs Facebook page and uh, then we're going to do extra stuff and that the first day of it is my birthday so there'll be a birthday party day and specials and the last day I'm on the 14th of September is the first day of our spring exhibition so we'll put the tour on with that too. But it's going to be a lot of fun and um, yes, if you, if you would love, if you ever asked me what other Facebook group would I follow, I would say Love and Hugs. It's going to be huge, huge fun. Uh, and if you want to do any of the projects that we have done since March last year, you can grab all of those as well. I'm doing this and I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Just a minute. Okay. Now what you're going to do is sew up your side panels. See, I've done this so many times, I just, I'm not even thinking. So you're out like that. You're going to bring your two top corners together on each side. And we're just going to sew straight along these side seams. You don't need to leave your seam allowance open this time at the ends just straight through. Who, who in their right mind did I think that I was going to be able to do this and the hexagon one? Just. But I am happy now because I've worked out what I'm going to do for you on Tuesday. You realise it's going to be a little bit of a competition. Just a little bit of, you know, healthy rivalry between Emma and myself. Excuse me a minute, we are not running as fast as we could run, which means at some point, yeah, I've turned the master speed down, which you can do on these machines. Watch this. Now we're moving. 
Oh, I know why I turned it down. I know why I turned it down. Uh, Patricia, your order's done too. Um, I turned it down because I was using the start-stop button to hem some curtains rather than having to use my foot. And I didn't want the machine to go super, super fast for me at the time. So I, I wanted it to go slower than the, the instant slide speed uh, on the front of the machine. I'm wondering if you're going, that that machine sounds different to um, Fiona Bill's new machine and Christine Davies new machine. You're absolutely right. They do sound different. The reason is, is that uh, this is a 570 and it sounds the same as a, five, a 770 and pretty much the same as 790 in the Benina models. And these machines have the wider feed dogs. So they're 9mm wide, as I think I mentioned it the other day. They're 9mm wide, not 5.5. And, and then because of that, they have a different mechanism so that it helps you push and control the fabric through the machine when you're going at high speed straighter. Because it's like trying to drive down straight down a road. It's narrow to do it down the middle of the road if the road is narrow rather than wider. So they're just, they're just built a little bit differently and they have a dual feed system. I haven't got my dual feed foot on. Don't need it for this. But they have a dual feed system for that reason as well. So sometimes people go, hmm, he sounds a little different. That's why. Right, now what we're going to do is, so these are sewn up. So at the base now, we just pull open. See that? Our magical maths. When I do that and open up that side seam so it's in the middle, it perfectly fits across the short sides of our base. I'm just going to give, uh, or just give this a little press. It's just like a constant obstacle course here with stuff on the floor and cords. Rob's ordered some flash new, I don't know, power board control panel thing for me so that evidently it's going to be neater. I'm not sure how, but it's going to be neater. I wish I could show you Ginny. Oh, she's curled up again. She loves the, um, she's sitting on my mum's travel trunk, which was the trunk that my mum's uh, mum brought all her clothes and bits and bobs to Australia in when they immigrated here in 1954. Sorry, mum, just giving it away. Um, but I've got that precious piece of luggage. It looks like it needs another paint. And Ginny is curled up on it on top of Southern Jewels 2. And um, what else has she got down there? Oh, and Centre Stage in purple. I've been bringing home a whole heap of quilts with the intention of hanging them behind me, a different one each time. You know, they all haven't got sleeves on them, have they? And I just thought, Need to look a little bit professional today, so I didn't use the ball clips. I'm very excited about the Love and Hugs bit. It, just thinking that um, it's going to be a way, almost, just another way for us to really promote Australian flora and fauna with the projects we're going to do during those two weeks. And Margaret Upston will be in with her beautiful stitcheries and candle wicking during that week as well. So it's just going to be two weeks, two weeks, a little bit busy. We're going to start with birthday cake. I'm putting it out there this year. I don't usually tell anyone when my birthday is, but I am the first of spring and there will be cake. Maybe we need a bit of a cake project. Maybe we need um, an Australian, like a lemon myrtle cake, lemon myrtle shortbread. Oh yeah, we could do that too. I don't even know what day of the week the first of September is. So even if it doesn't if it doesn't fall on a Tuesday or a Thursday, we'll be starting on that day anyway. There'll probably be a broadcast every day, to be honest. Have I clipped that one? Probably not enough. 
glasses first, then the scissors. Just clip into that corner a bit more. Um, for all my for my beautiful girls in the UK, today is the day. Festival of Quilt starts today. So it's the first show in a very, very long time. Um, if you are going to the show, please, as I said, she said, please, please go and see Vivian at Purple Stitches. Here's my B BFF. Uh, and if you see Natasha walking around with my mate Natasha, who has all my stuff in the UK, walking around with Mr. Cafe. Um, I know she's having dinner with him tonight. Who wouldn't love to have dinner with Cafe and Brandon? My goodness me. Um, but she'll be with him, so please say hi and say, hey, heard all about the fact you're going to be here. And you have to say it with an Australian accent, okay? Hey, g'day. It's, uh, Lisa said I had to be really corny with an Australian accent and say hello. There we go. Look at that. It fits. I'm not surprised, but I'm just trying to make the point. Such a simple little maths project. For you to work out. So as I said you can make two of these um, and, and put one inside the other, sew around the top and bag them out. If you do remember to leave yourself a little, uh, a little opening to turn it through in the lining and I would do that in a side seam not in the base because the base is going to get a little bit of a workout. It is going to get a workout. Uh, with weight of your shopping so uh, I would actually do that in the top why do I need Christine you need a bench with the ironing board on top yeah, yeah I know I know I know I do I need lots of stuff Christine and it um it's kind of it's kind of slowly happening kind of slowly happening that we are getting ourselves together here the main reason I haven't finished everything off is I know what I want to go and buy and now that we can go out and shop I can go and get what I need. I think I mentioned the other day I'm going to get a trolley um, but if I can get the flat top trolley, the ironing board, uh, the ironing bench bit, oh look you've got the afternoon sun, look at that. Um, Jenny I don't suppose you want to shut that blind for me? No. Uh, that's all going to work really, really well. And I need another shelf behind me to put all of the specials on. But I can't really do much more until those other flash new lights get here. I told Rob we all made an executive decision. We needed to move the... <laughs> that we, we needed to move the light overhead. And he said, who said? I said, well, me and all the girls that were watching, we're all going to move it. So he's going to do that. But it's not an easy task. It requires some uh, expletives, and um, you can't see a thing now, can you? But you can. It's proof the sun is shining in Melbourne. Some expletives and a ladder, a pair of pliers, a couple of other bits, and some more trusty cable ties. Yes, Karen, I'm popping it on a quilter's life for you. Absolutely. Just while I finish this off, it, we've mentioned it enough today, I need to put it up because people are all going, what on earth? This is a quilter's life. So this is um, my online club and it's $10 a month and there's projects and recipes and instructions and blogs and blogs. Probably one or two a week. Uh, a lot of fun specials and things like that. So you don't join through Chandler's Cottage. Um, you actually go to aquiltuslife.podia.com and Podia are a very, very clever company that uh, run it for us. And any any questions or, you're welcome Karen, any questions or queries you've got about your membership or your passwords or your credit card changing or anything, you, you just let me know if you can't sort it out. And then the gorgeous Cassandra, who's my, well, she's my everything, my business manager, my graphic designer, you know, graphic designer is in all your patterns. She does all of those. I just scribble, write them all up, and she makes the magic. But she will talk to you and help you sort things out. That's what she does. She sorts me out, and she's more than happy to sort you out too. Okay, I'm going to turn this machine off. And, uh, where is Rick? 
Karen, I thought you were coming to pick up your order today. I'm sure you were coming to pick up your order today. Pop this down here. They're not light, the fives and the seven series, but with good reason because they are machine quilting machines and they can be embroidery machines. So you, this is a better camera. My table is so high, um, so that is why they are heavy. They need to be. Okay, so we're all sewn up. Now, as I said, you could put another one inside, right sides together, sew around the top so that it is lined. And I'm just waiting for Sharon to say, Sharon, you haven't said it. Lisa, could you laminate the inside? Could you add a plastic lining? Could you? Yep, yep, you can do all of that. Um, you can also make your own uh, Deb Burt. I don't know if Deb's here today, but Deb would also say to put in the thermal batting, the thermal lining you can buy, as Deb's made, makes really cool um, steering wheel covers. I just can't find the best spot to show you this because where I've got the table. Okay, so that is your perfectly fitting base. Okay. Let's get shot first. Hang on girls, I'm just gonna go, I'm going to do a little bit of gymnastics. A bit a little bit like Tom Cruise through the lasers in the museum kind of thing in Mission Impossible. And shut that blind. Is it that blind? Oh no, it's the other one. I just did oh, I just limbo danced for nothing. <laughs> That's better. Holy moly. I thought it would be really nice to have the natural light coming through. Right. That's better. Okay, so our tray perfectly fits in the bottom. There we go. Let me sit it on this. Got my trusty toolbox for my 570. Let me up there. there you can see that. So, so when when I put my milk container in, the whole thing doesn't go lick anymore. It's going to stay together and sit really nicely. So this one is only this is a little one. This would take the soy sauce and maybe a box of cereal and a few bits. This is a little one that you take, or this would be really good for your fruit and veg even. So that's a little one. So you just, you know, hem the top a couple of times over so that you're really, so it's neat and tidy. Pop on some handles, off you go. So that that is how simple it is to make these up. I've spun it out because I've been gas bagging to you and talking about other things, but if you sit down cut a heap out you're going to have six of them made in an hour and I'm not I'm not exaggerating if you keep them really simple you're going to have six done so I want you to remember the other things that I showed you as well um, about doing them bigger or smaller to pop different things in so if you've got some containers go through the pantry and see what you've got that you're going to want to carry you might even want to do just a tall narrow one that's going to take a bottle of wine. Again, if you have a sturdy base, it's not going to move. Or two bottles of wine. Who am I to argue? So, uh, yeah, so have, please, please have a go. Rewind, have a look at the measurements. And as I said, Quilters Life members, I will um, pop those instructions up for you. What I'll actually do is put the excerpt from the design handbook in there and then you'll be able to, with a little bit of extra text about um, ideas of things that you can use for the base. I so want to make my other ones up now. So and then we go to the shops and we look good. Now the other thing about this is actually probably that one so I make it dizzy. When these fold up so I know we can squish our plastic ones up really small but what I love about this, if you have a heap of your meat tray bases or tubs that are the same size, when you've finished, they scrunch down and they will nest in top of each other. So even if you just, you know, if you've got a set of them to give as a gift with them all made up, sit them all on top of each other um, and then tie them up 
or make like a scrunchy sleeve you know, a big scrunchie with elastic in the middle with fabric that will wrap around them and hold them all together. Because I really like the idea of showing off at the checkout, you know, with these and just flipping off the elastic and wearing it like a band-aid, a band-aid, what am I trying to say? A bracelet or a scrunchie around my wrist and just unfolding my bags. <laughs> all right. Um, last but not least, the things that we have left under live seven wherever I put it you know the scoop live seven for this week um they're all still there there's the fabrics I'll run through them quickly now oh here it is I added I added one more thing today we sold we sold out of the navy handles and I would love to give you some get some more in but with monsoons and things in in China and stuff at the moment and my handbag furniture supplier going, it's going to be a while in the nicest possible way. Luckily, we've got those square frames out. I, I will order more, but I won't have them for at least two, three weeks. So instead of putting things on back order and I ended up low on the blue fabric, I switched. So that one's been taken down. You will now find under the brown bag handles under Live 5 that we are doing this as the special instead. Now, I think... I don't think I've changed the price. <laughs> oh no. Hang on a minute. I've got to go in here. I've got to go in here and change it before you get in there. You're going to watch, you're going to watch me do this, aren't you? Okay, hang on. I've got to go in here. Okay, now you can go shop. I've, I hadn't, oh, I had to change the price. Okay, now you can go shop under Life 7, so it's $22 and you get the handles and you're going to get all the fabrics. This is a super, super deal, super deal. But also the instructions that come with the handles in this fabric are a wraparound, base and sides with tapered edge. Now why does it taper? Now it gets really taper. It's just the way it flattens out. So this is a really good example of you going going backwards from what we've done today and going, oh, okay, so the base is that and the head, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now I understand why the panels are that wide. See that? It happens that way. So that's up on special. The brown under the Australian sun's up there as well. And then I've also popped up because what we talked about earlier in the week and, and just ongoing stuff we're doing now with English paper piecing and Dresden's and the whole lot. We've also got on special our Summer Palace fans and I kind of did the whole sob story about not not having time to do this so this is what we need to do now I'm going to do this with polyfuse with these fans and the octagons that we had that we've got up on special as well so you've got the purple one hello Kathy <laughs> better late uh, we've got the dark blue that one's actually been really popular which I'm loving and a lot of people have put them together so that's the pale blue, or the cream with the blue and the grey over the top. This is going to be the same thing. I'm going to get my projects finished, and then there's not going to be any fabric left. That's the red. Oh, I'm going to love the red. I'm going to love the red. And then we've got the black. So the black's really dramatic. So if you're going, I don't know. If you want some ideas on the on the English paper piecing templates that we've got up just have a look at Tuesday's show again quickly just skim through it don't watch the whole thing skim through to the bit where I'm playing with the with the pretty stars and things because um, we spoke about lots of different things that we could do with fussy cutting from here and then fussy cutting the black out as a background to go with it and the dragonflies and things so they're all up on super special at 16 a meter on the website um, under live seven if you want to have if you want to if you want to have a look at those um I think oh my goodness I think I'd, I'd better go back to work and um, pack off or your get all your orders to the post office so again um, yeah if you order I was gonna say you order from today's show we will get it out to you as quickly as we can. Uh, we should be able to do it tomorrow for you and get it out. And again, if you were waiting to combine from today's and you had other stuff, 
we went through it all and if we could see that everything crammed in and it wasn't going to save you any money by combining them um, and also making sure that we secured your order for you they are all on their way to you from tonight and tomorrow so they're all done but that's a good thing hopefully a lot of you will have them for the weekend so you can get sewing um, I won't see you this weekend it's a really busy weekend because I'll get to see the kids we've got some stuff to do around the house oh no I am open on Saturday too um, the shops open on Saturday um, from from 9 to 1 and then if you would like to come just ring ahead and make an appointment I've already got one appointment in at 9 30 so just ring so that there is time and we can um, offer you a really nice safe environment we're doing one-on-ones or just two people at a time at the moment and um, yes I will be back on Tuesday with Emma in the building and we will have lots and lots of fun together okay have a great evening have a great Friday and have a great weekend and get busy get the lists going and get stuff done while you can all right make the most of it Love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Miss Ginny, are you going to come and help me pack?